Hey everybody, it's Stephanie from Apex Languages with some more grammar to brighten up your day. Who's ready to learn more about pronouns? Today we're going to focus on reflexive and intensive pronouns. So here we've got our big list of the different types of pronouns. We talked about personal pronouns and possessive pronouns last time. Do you see the reflexive ones? Right there at the end. Now, I'm sorry if I sound a little repetitive repeating reflexive and intensive pronouns. Uh, the thing is that both of these forms, although they serve different purposes, they look identical. So how do you form them? You have myself, yourself, himself, herself, itself. See any patterns so far? You're taking these personal pronouns and adding the word self. Interestingly, and maybe frustratingly, it's not very consistent. So myself, yourself, these are both possessive patterns, but it's not his self. In some dialects, you might hear his self, but really it's supposed to be himself. And so that can be confusing. I want you to see first person and second person, I and you, you want to use the possessive form of the personal pronoun. But the third person, him, her, it, that's when you're going to use the object form. Uh, and her and her, they look the same. And when you have the self, right, itself, it, it, it can be a little hard to tell, well, is that object or is that possessive? You know, the assumption is third person should follow the same pattern. Um, at least that should help you a little bit you, uh, because the object and the possessive form of her and it uh, are, are very similar. You don't have to worry about that. The number one thing to remember is the M, okay? So himself, don't go around saying his self, himself with an M. So again, myself, yourself, himself, herself, itself. In the plural, um, maybe it's been a while, let me refresh your memory. In the plural, F turns into a V. So for example, the word wolf becomes wolves. Same thing here, self becomes selves. And so you want to make both parts of the pronoun plural. Not my becomes our, but self also becomes selves. And so make sure that both sides match. Ourselves, yourselves, themselves. Once again, it follows that same pattern. First and second person follows the possessive pattern, but the third person is object. So just like him should have an M, they, the they form, the, the third person plural form should have an M as well, them, themselves, not their selves. This is a good opportunity for me to touch on another subject real quickly, pronouns and gender, masculine and feminine, he and she. Okay, if someone is a male, you use he. If someone's a female, you use she. Students get this confused all the time, and I, I don't believe it's because they don't know the difference. I think it's just a matter of practice. It's not something uh, that they necessarily do in their own language. Try to catch it when you get it wrong, and just keep practicing. That should clear up eventually. I'm more concerned right now about the issue of what do you do when you don't know whether that third person singular is male or female. And it's not an it. If we're talking about people and you don't know the gender, what do you do? If the student studies, blank should do well on the test. Well, guess what? In case you're not aware, a student could be a boy or a girl, a man or a woman. 
And so what do we put in this blank? This is a problem that challenges students, uh, but also native speakers, okay? So it's not just people who are learning the language. Um, it's an issue that is actually quite controversial as far as grammatical uh, issues go at the moment. It's an issue that is in the process of changing in our language. The traditional answer to this was he. And I'm sure this is a solution that was a, a, is or was also predominant in your language, okay? Because, uh, because men ruled the world, right? But as the feminine movement uh, began and continued, people started saying, uh, hold on a second. Again, not all uh, students are males. So they developed the he, she. Okay, if you, in writing, you can say he slash she, uh, that's a little hard to say, he slash she. Um, if you're talking he or she, he and or she, the thing with this solution, it is direct, it uses the grammar that we already have. Unfortunately, it's cumbersome, it's long and difficult to say. English speakers, their tongues are lazy. We want to say as little as possible. We don't want to say he and or she, especially again and again in a long paragraph or in, in, in a, a formal uh, document. It just gets really old. The more modern solution, which is gaining support. Originally, uh, grammaticians did not like this. But uh, but it's becoming more and more popular, and this is the approach that I recommend. It's the approach that I use, and it is the uh, third person singular they. All right. Um. So if you go, if if you are reading something or you're listening, and someone says they, but they're not referring to more than one person, chances are they're actually trying to avoid that whole he, she problem. They can be used singularly. If the student studies, they should do well on the test. This takes a little bit of adjusting. It's an adjustment. Uh, again, this is an innovation. This is something new in our language. So it's an adjustment for everyone. Um, but be aware, they is probably your best option for avoiding the, for, for offending the feminist, right? For avoiding the issue of, do I need to use he or she or both? Keeping that in mind, back to our chart, uh, if you want to use the reflexive or intensive pronoun, but you again, you don't know the gender, you can use themself. This is a case where the them uh, is you're using them, but you're using the singular self because it's just describing one person. And so it should not be selves. So you might see themselves, themselves. Again, this is so new that uh, Microsoft Word a lot of times will correct it. Microsoft Word does not like it uh, when it's doing its spell check. So be aware, this is correct. This is widely accepted. Okay, the dictionary, I checked, the dictionary told me it's okay. Um, but it's just new, and so some people will disagree. Okay, some experts, some old fashioned experts, uh, you know, will not be crazy about it. Uh, incidentally, including Microsoft Word, but it's okay, you have my permission. So, now that you know how to form the reflexive pronoun, when should you do it? What does it do? If you look at the word reflexive, it starts with re. Re means to do again. Flex is turning, right? Uh, if you're, you're flexing something, you're moving, it's sort of turning. And so the idea with something that's reflexive is you're turning it back to the person who's saying it. Reflexive pronouns 
describe action that affects the, the um, not necessarily the speaker, but the subject of your sentence. Here's an example. After I clean the dishes, I clean my hands. Okay, so after I clean, clean what? The dishes, right? Something else. I clean what? My hands. Yes, they're my hands, but uh, I'm being specific and I'm saying me, the person as a whole, is focusing on something uh, specific on my body. Okay. On the other hand, you could say I clean myself. Okay. So they're more or less mean the same thing. I clean my hands, I clean myself. So the focus here, I clean the dishes, you're cleaning something else. The action is being received by something else. As opposed to I clean myself, that action is going back to I. Who benefits from the cleaning? The same person who's doing the cleaning in the first place. Here's another one. Responsible parents feed their kids. They feed other people. Selfish parents feed just themselves. So when you say themselves, they're feeding, they're giving out food, but the food comes back to them. And so it's reflexive. They are doing an action, but the action is received by them. The action affects them, they being the subject, okay? So basically the subject and the direct object is the same. The intensive pronoun, on the other hand, although it looks identical, serves a different function. The intensive pronoun is used for emphasis. Okay, it makes, some, it makes something stronger. I clean the dishes. Okay, I, I, you know, I clean the dishes. I clean the dishes myself. You can see that boy, he's so happy, he's so proud. He's trying to emphasize that, yes, the dishes are done, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is me, I did it, okay? He's taking all the attention and, and focusing on the fact that he's the one who did the dishes or I'm the one who did the dishes. I clean the dishes all by myself. Okay, uh, same thing. Uh, keep in mind, if you're going to say by, um, and it's, it's the same person, okay? So I clean the dishes by myself. Uh, you did your homework by yourself. I certainly hope so. Don't let other people do your homework, right? You, you should do your homework by yourself. You should do your homework yourself. Um, he wrote the novel by himself. Um, so use um, use this form with by, okay? But um, again, here we're, we're focusing on it's me. I did it. I myself cleaned all of those dishes. This one, you're really just trying to draw people's attention. I myself, me, me, me. <laughs> all right, you're emphasizing. You're 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 putting a spotlight on yourself. Okay. You're making it more intense. I is not strong enough. Myself is even stronger. Responsible parents feed their kids themselves. They don't make others do it for them. Okay. Um, so here it's just using a different pronoun, right? Uh, going off of that other sentence I had before. Uh, they do it themselves. So it's not the parents aren't giving themselves the food. But it's just emphasizing that the parents should be doing the work. So the parents, they should do it themselves. You're just making that subject stronger. All right, it's time to practice. Tell me about what you do every day. Pretty simple. And it'll give you the opportunity to write something longer than just a sentence. Here's the tricky part. Try to include both reflexive and intensive pronouns. Okay, so see what you can do. Uh, give it a try. Keep in mind that um, English tends to use reflexive pronouns less than other language, for example, Spanish. Um, but 
try coming up with examples if you email me what you have I can point out no no we wouldn't make this reflexive we'd make this reflexive okay the the best way to really feel your way of when you need it when you don't is to uh, practice and, and use again use the language I myself am dumb for the moment but not before I thank you as always for watching check out more videos at apexlanguages.com have a healthy safe wonderful day